Praise God. We all came on a real good night tonight. Amen. If there was any Wednesday night that you should have come, it was tonight. Amen. 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 Right, we do something really special and something different. And if I have to read my notes just to give you a little kind of a little backdrop of what's going to be going on tonight, just let me read my notes over here a little bit. Amen. Amen. Tonight is a special night because tonight we're going to call it and we're calling it Tag Team Bible Study. Can I get somebody to say amen? amen? Well, Pastor, what's a tag team Bible study? A tag team Bible study is where two or three of us get up, speak on the same subject in an order, and then you all just be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is the first time we're doing it in this manner because the Lord gave us this. That way, the people that are anointed to speak behind this sacred desk you can hear from them, too, and not just from Pastor Jesse and Pastor Delisa all the time. Hallelujah. Because I know the Lord has something to say. Because the Holy Ghost speaks the same language. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what's going to happen tonight, I'm going to open the service. And we're going to talk on the subject of faith tonight. And we're all going to speak on the same subject. So we won't be bouncing around and uh, jumping from subject to subject. We're all speaking on the same subject. I'm opening up. I'm going to speak for a little bit. And then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to tag Sister Isabel Yay. in. She's going to come and just take over and speak on faith and share what God has put in her heart for about 10 minutes. Now, the 10 minute is the marker. So if you see me on that chair and pastor does this, I'm not being rude to the people here. I'm not being rude to the saints. And I'm not being rude to our lovely elders here. I'm just giving them a sign that it's nine minutes and they got to close it down in that one minute. Amen. That's what a tag team Bible study is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So y'all excited about tonight's tag team Bible study? Y'all are going to get something from each and every one of us that you can use and put in your arsenal to walk this Christian walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight's title. Yes, it's about faith, but we have a title for this entire little uh, tag team Bible study and it's called if you're taking notes the title is faith it till you make it faith it till you make it y'all heard that old saying you gotta fake it till you make it you gotta go to work you gotta put on poker face you gotta fake it till you make it but you know around here as Christians we don't fake it till we make it we faith it till we make it amen, amen. Hebrews, the, in the book of Hebrews the Bible tells us this that without faith it's impossible to please God Amen. because anyone that comes to him must believe that he is or must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. But pastor, how can we make sure that our faith stays strengthened? How can we make sure that we're going to faith it till we make it? Well, Sister Isabel, Sister Norma, and myself we're going to be speaking by the Holy Ghost because some of you need to hear this and you need a faith boost. You need a faith lift tonight. Amen. 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 So I want you, <laughs> oh, you're going to faith it till you make it before you walk out of these doors tonight. Amen. Amen. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. we got to hear from other parts of the body of Christ because how many know that there are gifts Many gifts given to different people. The Holy Ghost is in charge of giving the different gifts. And we want to let people, the Holy Ghost wants to allow people to exercise that gift tonight. Because God has something to say through his people. Amen. Amen. So 1 Corinthians. Now I got my timer up here. Because you know us pastors, we get long winded. <laughs> We can just don't give us the microphone. <laughs> we'll never stop talking. So, so I got my timer up here, so I make sure I don't take up all the time because I want to give our sisters over there a chance to speak to the body of Christ tonight. So I got my timer. Got to be fair. So, First Corinthians chapter sixteen, and we're going to be starting. And, and because we're we're doing this as a tag team, I'm only going to cover a few things in a scripture, maybe just a scripture or two. So, um. It's not going to be long, but it's going to be strong. Hallelujah. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 16, we're going to be starting at verse 13 because God has something to say, some, a lot of things to say in this one little scripture. <laughs> Is everybody with me? Amen. Amen. Okay, so we've got to faith it till we make it, right? So let's see what Apostle Paul has to say here in Corinthians. And it reads like this. In the New Living Translation, it says, Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. I can't even move on from that part of the scripture. 
I got to take the scripture apart so that we can understand what Apostle Paul is saying. See, the King James in verse 13 says, you got to keep watch. You got to be on guard. So I would, when I was reading this and studying for this part, for this tag team Bible study about faith, I imagined, if you think about a bodyguard, what is a bodyguard or even a bouncer? When we used to go to the clubs, you know, we all did come from somewhere. <laughs> we all come from somewhere. Amen. We all come from somewhere. But anyway, the bouncer was, you know, they stand like this. Or even bodyguards, if you, you know, see famous people, the bodyguards are like this, or they put their sunglasses on, and I mean, they're, they got imaginary lat syndrome. <laughs> ILS, Pastor Jesse calls it. Imaginary lat syndrome, and they're walking around like this. So I would imagine, just picture this, just standing guard and watch. In the military, I love using the military as analogies because, and I use it on Sunday, but I'm gonna use it again. I love because it, there are so many analogies you can use in the military that pertain to the word of God. And when, they, when they send someone to keep watch, that person, whoever that person is, has gotta stay up all night long. And if they fall asleep, what happens? They're sitting ducks, amen? amen. So we gotta stand watch. The King James says watch. The New Living says we gotta be on guard. For what, Pastor? It says here, it says, we got to stand firm in the faith. What do we have to be on watch for? And what do we have? why do we have to stand firm? The first thing is, we got to, and this is the main thing, our faith needs to be in Christ and what he's done at the cross. That's what he's done at the cross. And the first thing is, when we're standing firm in the faith, we got to understand when we're standing firm, we're looking up to Christ or looking to Christ because he's soon to return. Amen. Well, Pastor, I've been hearing that for 20 years, so I'm getting pretty weak and I'm going to go back to the world. Don't do that. The Bible says, be on guard. It says, watch. It says, stand firm in the faith. I'm going to stand firm. That means if Brother Hernandez comes and tries to tip me here, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be tipped. I'm going to stand firm. I was watching this um, cheerleading thing. Some new show, I was watching this cheerleading thing. The cheerleaders were just tumbling and athletic. When I was a cheerleader, if I had done that, I'd have been probably in the hospital and never walking again. I mean, the athleticism in those cheerleaders. And one of the things they were doing was they were doing these tumbling passes and these athletic, where they have to do a backflip onto the gentleman, and the gentleman lifts the girl up, and if and she spins on his on his hands with her feet, and if she doesn't stay firm, what happens to her? She buckles and she falls down. Take that analogy and apply it to your Christian life. You got to stand firm, no matter what comes your way, no matter if temptations come your way. You're going to stand firm. Think about a hurricane when it comes and it sweeps over the trees and the trees are starting to bend. Those of you who have trees in your yard, and you go, oh, the tree's going to, it's going to snap. That tree just bends. You're like that tree that bends this way, east, west, north, and south, depending on the, the winds. And the, the tree is not going to snap. You need to stand firm in your faith. You need to keep watch on the watchtower. Amen? Amen. And you also need to keep watch for wolves. What are wolves, Pastor? We've talked about that not long ago on a Wednesday night. Wolves are people that bring false teaching towards you. People that bring false uh, doctrine towards you. People that try to take you out of the truth. Those are wolves. You need to stand firm. You need to be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. We keep our eyes on. That's the only way we're going to be able to do it. I keep my eyes on Jesus. Amen. There are many times I couldn't stand firm in the faith. I didn't, know, I didn't know I could until we went through what we went through, different trials, sickness. I mean, all these kinds of crazy things happening to Pastor and I in the beginning of our Christianity. But we stood firm in the faith. No matter what hurricane came, no matter what storm, we stood firm in the faith and we kept a watch. I kept a watch. And it goes on to say this. It says, be courageous. Be courageous. That means be bold. Amen. Be bold in your faith. Be bold. And it goes on to say, be strong. How am I going to be strong? What do I do? Don't give up. A lot of Christians today, because of the day and age we live in, and you all know this because you all live out there in this world, the temptation is just so aggressive. Coming at people from every angle. I mean, there is no escaping the Internet. I mean, you're going to have to really be one of those that's being very watchful and being on guard. You've got to stand firm in the faith. You've got to be courageous. And you have to be strong in this day and age. Well, how do I be strong, Pastor? you got to pray. you got to read your word. And you got to come to church. 
I was talking with someone and I explained to them that there is a strength that you will only get in church that you can't get in your private time with the Lord. That's right. You can get certain strength in your private time with the Lord, but you won't get that full strength until you come together with the body of Christ. There is a strength that we draw when we come into the presence of the body of Christ and in the presence of the Lord. Some of you have been coming on Wednesdays that weren't used to coming on Wednesday nights. And there's a strength coming into Amen. your body. There's a strength coming into your mind. It doesn't mean we're going to feel perfect every single day. But the Lord, he keeps a good set of books of you pressing in and trying to get here. Amen. Not just on Sunday, but also on Wednesdays. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't give up. Another thing says when you're standing strong, don't retreat. Don't retreat. Don't leave. Big, big temptations come. Things come at the people, at, you know, here in the church over the years, and they get tempted. I mean, maybe they got, try to get uh, turned, turned away or, or get distracted, and they end up leaving. The Lord said, don't retreat. Don't leave. Stand firm in the faith. Stand firm. If God has called you here at the hand of God ministry, because we have, we don't, we don't have it all, but God does, and he has it in his word. Amen. Amen. So we stand firm in the faith. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober. Be vigilant, for the devil roams around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. So that means if this word is speaking to us as Christians, that means there's a possibility that a Christian can be devoured. What does the devil come after? He comes after our faith. If he can get us off course with our faith, he can get us weak. He can get us where we, we start doubting. We start uh, maybe getting tempted to go out and sin, to go back to the world backslide whatever it is the devil wants you off your course and he wants to attack the faith of the christian amen, amen. you gotta faith it till you make it sister isabel i'm gonna turn it over to you amen. hallelujah amen. hallelujah Turn to Luke 8, and we're going to start at 22. This is the story of when Jesus calmed the storm. And it's actually in three different places, um, but I chose Luke, but I will refer to uh, one of the other scriptures. So are we there? Luke 8, 22. Yeah. Awesome. So one day... One day. This one day. <laughs> this one day. Jesus was ministering to the people that were following him. A large crowd was following him. So many people that they were crowding him onto the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And so Jesus said to his disciples, Let's get in the boat and let's cross over to the other side of the lake. Now, the lake was also known as the Sea of Galilee. Amen. And the Sea of Galilee is an interesting place. It's about 13 miles long and 7 miles wide. So it's not a very big lake, but they called it the sea because of the way it behaved. It behaved like a sea. Wow. It was surrounded by mountains and hills. And it was actually... Um, it is still actually the uh, lowest point on earth. Isn't that Amen. interesting? Amen. The lowest point on earth. It's way big, low sea level. And because of the mountains and the cool air that, so it's in a valley. Right. It's in a basin, the Sea of Galilee. So the mountains and the hills surrounding it, they, the cool air goes down into the valley where the warm air is rising off the warm water of the lake. So that causes a lot of turbulence. So, that was a little geography. <laughs> so, um, so when Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. Hmm, that really interested me. I, I researched that further by going to some concordances. 
And I realized that Jesus told them to do it. So that meant they were in his perfect will. Weren't they? In his perfect will. And then, so the disciples got into a boat. So what does that mean? The disciples were obedient. They got into the boat. And they started out. So, verse 23 says, as they sailed across. Now, they were only going to go across like five miles. They weren't going a long journey, okay, just about five miles. But as they sailed across, Jesus decided it was time to settle down for a nap. So remember, he's been ministering all day long right. to these crowds of people. So I understand, and I know pastors understand. Great guy. And Sister Norma understands that it can be exhausting to minister to the needs of people. Amen. But it's a good exhaustion. Uh, okay. Amen. So in another, I think in Matthew, in Matthew 8, it says that he he even laid his head on a pillow. So in my mind, I'm thinking he's going to go down for the count. But there, it's not going to be a very long nap because it's only five miles that they're traveling. So Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon, a fierce storm suddenly came on the lake. Fierce. It doesn't just say a storm. It says a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water, and they were in real danger. Now, most of the disciples were, I'm sorry, take it back. Some of the disciples were fishermen by trade. They we're used to these storms. They fished on this Sea of Galilee regularly. So I thought they were afraid. They didn't see it coming. They didn't see this fierce storm coming. And they were, it says that they were in real danger. I read also that the waves can get as high as 20 feet high. I'm thinking that's tall, 20 feet high. So here is this fisherman boat, uh, boat and uh, some commentaries say it was probably Peter's boat. So it wasn't a very large vessel. And so it's being tossed to and fro. You've, you've seen those movies, you know, that show these scary waves coming over and it's dark because it's nighttime, okay? And so there's water coming in on the, onto the boat and they are afraid. It's very dangerous. They were so dangerous that they went, the disciples went and woke Jesus up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. Think about that. They're shouting. Of course, they're being tossed to and fro. And they probably, and it says Jesus was down into the cabin. So they had to make their way down the stairs to wake him up. And I'm thinking, Jesus was really that sound asleep? Mm. <laughs> that got my interest. So, Jesus woke up, and he rebuked the, wait a minute, let me go back. Let's go back to, disciples went and woke him up. Think about this. Where else would they go? Okay, I know, they're on a boat. There's not a whole lot of places they could go. But they didn't go to the world. They didn't call their mother. They did not call their best friend. They went straight to Jesus. Amen. Okay? So that's what we are going to do. We're going to go straight to the Lord because he is sovereign. So when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. In Luke, it, I mean in Mark 4, 35 through 41, it says, he said, peace, be still. Amen. Suddenly, say it with me, church. Suddenly. <laughs> The storm stopped, and all was calm. <laughs> then he asked them, where is your faith? Where is your faith when you're being tossed and fro? Is it in doubt and in fear? I've been there. If any of you would have known me before I became a Christian, I would get easily 
flustered and, and frustrated and crazy. <laughs> I was very emotional. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Fear and doubt is the opposite of faith. But how many times does the Lord tell us, do not fear? Amen. For I am with, he was with the disciples in the boat in his perfect will for their life. Now, in some commentaries, there's also a suggestion that the enemy had something to do with this, okay? That, and, and it doesn't matter whether it's by your own hands or because if it's by your own hands, then God allows it for discipline reasons because he loves Amen. us and he's our father. <laughs> but if it's not by our own hands, then he allows it because he knows that we're gonna grow from it. Amen. And so it's important to trust in the process. Amen. So after, what I also noticed was that Jesus told the disciples, where is your faith? In, in other words, he's like, where is your faith? Right? <laughs> but he did it after he took care of the storm. He took care of the storm first, and he calmed the sea first. Amen. He looked out for what, he wanted to uh, comfort his disciples. Amen. So he handled business. But then he turned to them and said, where is your faith? So, it's a process. It's a process. We go glory to glory. And so, like Joyce Meyer says, are you a warrior? Are you a warrior? You can't be both. You're either going to worry, and worry isn't going to solve anything. Or, you're going to get into the Word of God, and you're going to throw some, you're going to throw some scriptures down. And you're going to let the love devil know that he is a liar and that you have the victory because, because the victory, the bigger the test, the bigger the victory. Amen. Amen. So now I'm going to introduce Sister Norma. to me, especially Amen. because of that part about they were in real danger. Okay. Amen. <laughs> you, guys, you guys keep believing in on the Lord. That's right. Alright, so here um, at the Head of God Ministry, we'd like to read from the NLT version. So if you'll please turn with me to Hebrews 12.1. you'll see that says God's discipline proves his love. And I'm going to read the it in its context and then I'm going to explain it some. So, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> to give you a little bit of context, the book of Hebrews was written um, for perhaps second generation Christians who may have been considering returning back to Judaism because of immaturity. Um, it stemmed from a lack of understanding of biblical truths um, in all believers. Basically, it's for all believers in Christ. So the period was about 70 AD or 80, 70, some people say. Uh, and Jewish Christians were likely encountering persecution socially, physically, Amen. from Jews and Romans, so all around them. So the chapter before Hebrews 12, Hebrews 11, speaks of the great hall of faith believers prior Amen. to Jesus sitting on earth. Um, they talk about Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, etc. And it discusses some of the tribulations they had to endure 
on this side to such a point as to state that this world was not worthy of them. There's no holding back in this letter. <laughs> it's a completely transparent explanation of the many hardships that were endured on earth before entering into heaven. The header above 12, again, states that God disciplines, God's discipline proves his love. Discipline does not feel good. It doesn't feel that great when it's happening. It kind of hurts. But the purpose and end result of it, of it is for us to get aligned with God's plan. Amen. We are no different than those who came before us. Many, many are the trials that we must face before entering into heaven. And the, the thing about faith, it is the evidence of things hoped for but not yet seen. Amen. Yet we do not stand alone or are without. We have an advocate and a comforter that guides us. We overcome the enemy and this world by the blood of the Lamb and by our testimony. Amen. Amen. So iron sharpens iron, and yes. faith come by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Yes. Amen. Therefore, we can draw that strength from God's word by hearing of the many tribulations that were faced by these faith warriors. It does. It sharpens us. It really does. Amen. So God's presence is, is sacred, and we have that help from the Holy Spirit. Um, as long as we go to him with a con with our heart, you know, really remorseful, we have a clear conscience before the Lord, Don't not allowing anything to pull us down, right? Or to stop us from that good work that God has selected us as his yielded vessels to Amen. do. Amen. And that's why it's so important to always make sure that we walk just with a repentant heart, right? Amen. So going back to to what it said, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us, God has set a work for us to do. you got to know that you're somebody going somewhere in the Lord. Amen. 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 And Amen. that you're going to stay in that place by being in his staying power. Okay? And we can only run with endurance if we keep our eyes on Jesus, not on circumstances. Amen. Jesus is our champion. Yes. Yes. And we're people that believe even without seeing because we trust in the good Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the whole foundation of our faith, right? Amen. I mean, we believe in something in a God that we've not seen, but we trust him and he's good. Amen. Amen. So Jesus perfects our faith. How does he do this? When we commune with him, doing what he is calling us to do, of course, reading the word, praying, coming to church. So we fix our eyes on Jesus and the hope we have. If you start putting your hope or your worth in your circumstances, you will be overcome to the point where you would be sad and you'll be oppressed. Um, so remember that this life is fading away and we have a covenant that is based on better promises than before. This life is but a breath. Amen. <laughs> We're but a fleeting shadow. And what we do by faith matters. And this here, this here is just a curtain call for what we're ultimately going and what when we'll see Jesus face to face. Amen. He's on the throne as our high attorney. And that is something worth shouting glory Hallelujah. about. Glory. Yes. Glory. Yes. Glory. So bus be busy about God's kingdom and forget the things that are behind you and press on to the call that you have. Amen. Amen. Praise God, sister. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to close with this scripture. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11 and go to verse 1. I guess go, I guess, one chapter back. And she quoted it, but I want you to see it. And as she was saying, in this particular chapter, there's the faith warriors that went through a lot of things back then that we're going through today. The same things that we go through today, amen? They weren't any different. And the 11 chap uh, Hebrews 11 chapter, uh, verse 1. Are we there? 
Yes. It says faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Are you hoping for something today according to the word of God? Are you hoping for something in the will of God for your life? It says here, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. We're a people that walk by faith and not by sight, as Sister Norma pointed out. We're a people that we think Jesus is asleep in the boat, as Sister Isabel pointed out, because we don't understand why he doesn't answer my prayer. Where are you, Lord, in all my situation? Where are you when I'm going through these turbulent seas? Where are you? He's right there in the boat. Amen. Amen. He's right there. He wants us. He wanted, He wants to teach us to rest in him Amen. and having that faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, according to the King James Version. Hallelujah. Yes. Faith. You got to faith it till you make it. Amen. You have to faith it till you make it. Pastor, can I get a little bit of music? You got to faith it till you make it, church. Hallelujah. Amen. You needed a faith lift tonight? And you had a master class on faith. Amen. There's something that you can take out of what you heard tonight and apply it to your life. There's something that you heard tonight that you can take and say, you know what? Look what the Lord has done. Lord, I believe it before I even see it because that's faith. We got to faith it till we make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. 